Hi, this is Jen Maleka, the Holistic Health Boss, your functional diagnostic practitioner and health coach. And this week we are talking about February as the month of love and romance and something that a lot of people don't like to discuss and that is a loss in their libido or sex drive. Now I wanted to bring this up because I see this so commonly in the line of work that I do. A lot of my clients are coming to me and one of their symptoms or ailments or main health complaints is a loss in sex drive. And this is actually fairly normal amongst a lot of people. Studies show that about 34% of women and 15% of men experience a loss in libido or sex drive either most of the time or often. Now this is not because you're getting older, this is actually a new world problem as I like to say. It's a combination of the fact that we live in a society now where we have so many distractions and so much more stress than our ancestors ever had to deal with. We are constantly connected to our devices. We are commuting longer hours and sitting in traffic for longer periods of time. We work longer hours than any generation ever has before us. We have multiple kids that we cart around to various activities throughout the week or throughout the day. We also are bombarded with more toxins in our environment and other types of stressors to our body than have ever been seen before. So all of this happens at the expense of our energy, our health, and ultimately our sex drive as a result of that. Being in the mood not only requires that you're in a mental space to let the lust flow, but it also requires your hormones to be working in addition to that. So hormones are what drive our desires, particularly testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, and even oxytocin, which is our love hormone. Now testosterone is the biggest influential factor when it comes to your sex drive, but all of these hormones have to be working together in order for you to actually feel like you have your groove in the bedroom. So misfiring hormones contribute to approximately 70% of low sex drive. So this week, I wanna dive into some details with you guys to explain on what's going on behind the scenes with your hormones and what you can do about it in order to boost your libido back to where it used to be. So let's talk about this. I have a nice chart here to describe this for you guys. So what happens is when we are under all of this stress over a period of time, there's this really high demand for our stress hormone cortisol. And over time, cortisol will take over and start stealing resources from other hormones. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how this happens. So when we're under constant stress all the time, we have cortisol over here. And cortisol demand goes up. So cortisol is the response to stress any kind of stress. Stress could be the um, processed foods that you're putting in your body, food sensitivities that you have, toxins that are in your environment, mental emotional stress from work or relationships. It can actually be physical stress from over exercising or maybe misalignments in your spine or your nervous system as well. So if you think about it, you could have multiple of those things going on and your demand for cortisol becomes really high. Now in a perfect scenario, these are how our hormones work. We eat dietary fats and vitamin B5s, and these are all broken down to create a hormone called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone then is split in 50-50 into two different pathways, and pregnenolone is used to create a hormone called DHEA, which then creates hormones that are called or referenced as androgens, and there's different types of androgens that it creates. And then those androgens create testosterone, and they also create the different estrogens that we have, estrone, estradiol, and estriol. The other 50% of pregnenolone is then broken off to create progesterone. And progesterone is then comes down here to help create cortisol. So in a normal, perfect pathway, you would have this division of 50-50% and everything's working perfectly. But like I was mentioning earlier, what happens is when we are under a lot of stress, our body is under a lot of stress, there's a high demand for cortisol. So I like to explain this like the California drought almost. So we keep using water, but there's not enough rain that's coming to fill our resources. So we have to start reaching out to other states like Arizona or Nevada and asking them, or Oregon or whoever it is, and asking them for water for resources. Something similar happens with your hormones. So when there's this high demand for cortisol over here, your body is trying to keep up with the production, the demand of it. So what does it start doing? It literally starts stealing pregnenolone coming over here to create progesterone and then over here to create 
cortisol. So when this happens, now you know we could estimate that maybe 75% of pregnenolone is being used to help create cortisol, and only 25% is coming over here to help create DHEA and testosterone and our estrogens. So what do you think is happening to these hormones? They're literally experiencing a drought. There's a loss of resources and your body cannot produce testosterone, estrogen, and DHEA like it should be able to do in a situation where there's not a lot of stress. So there is hope for the hopeless when it comes to your sex drive. Simply said, what we need to do is reverse the demand of cortisol so that we can re-regulate this pathway here so that you have the resources to create DHA, testosterone, and estrogen that are gonna drive your sex drive for you. And then also we wanna boost oxytocin levels. And oxytocin is your love hormone that's released during times of childbirth. It's actually that loving, feel-good hormone that you get that helps you forget all of the pain that you just went through. Oxytocin is also released during hugging as well as um, orgasm or when smiling or laughing. So part of getting your sex drive back means reversing the demand for cortisol and boosting oxytocin. So you're probably wondering, well, how exactly do I go about doing that? So to boost oxytocin, what you can do is just hug, laugh, and play more. Anytime you participate in any of these activities, it boosts your oxytocin levels immediately. Even something as simple as staring deeply into somebody's eyes or writing down a gratitude list can boost oxytocin levels. When we boost oxytocin levels, that actually helps to bring down our cortisol. And then also, in addition to that, what you can do to reduce the demand or to bring down cortisol levels or to you know, rewire this pathway essentially is you can meditate, do some deep breathing, or get upside down. Any time that you do these activities, it instantly reduces the amount of output of cortisol. It takes you out of fight or flight mode and puts you into more of a rest and relaxation mode. So this is simple. You can do some meditating for a few minutes. You can do some really deep breaths for a few minutes, or you can lay on the floor and put your feet up a wall and get upside down, essentially. If you know some inverted yoga poses, you can do those too. So those things are really helpful to reducing cortisol levels. You can do them simply for a few minutes once or twice a day. To help reduce cortisol even more, you can also eat an anti-inflammatory diet free of gluten, dairy, sugar, soy, and alcohol, or reduce your intake of those things. Getting to bed by 10 p.m. most nights of the week, and also reducing your exercise intensity or adding in a weekly yoga class can all help to reduce your cortisol levels. Testing your cortisol and understanding your hormone pathways can also be hugely insightful when it comes to your sex drive and just rebalancing your hormones in general. You can actually do this through a simple at-home urine test. Now, not all hormone tests are created the same, so actually there are more advantages of doing a urine test than there are in a blood test. One of the primary things that you wanna be able to see is what your cortisol rhythm looks like. So cortisol is naturally highest in the morning time and then it slowly tapers off throughout the rest of the day so it should be lowest before you go to bed. If you're doing a blood test, you can't see that rhythm. It's only giving you one snapshot in time. However, when you do a urine or even a saliva test, you're actually providing four different samples throughout the day so that you can see that natural rhythm of cortisol. In addition, you can also get some of the insights about estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and some of the androgen values as well that have that are playing a role in this hormone pathway. I like to recommend or utilize the urine test specifically in my practice because we can see the breakdowns of androgens that are at play, different aspects about how you're preferring different pathways of estrogen so that we can be more strategic and specific in implementing dietary sleep, exercise, supplement, and stress reducing techniques that are gonna to help to rebalance those hormones for you. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you're interested in learning more about cortisol testing and the at-home urine test, you can go ahead and click on the link below or go back to the email where you found this video to get more information on that. Have a great week and I'll see you next Thursday.